Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Friday Night Scripture Reading. I uh, thought we would do 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Um, I'm going to read out of the NLT. I don't know if I've ever done Friday Night Scripture Reading out of the NLT, but here it goes. Pastor Dave, I know, enjoys this translation. It's uh, good for uh, devotional reading um because it's, it's just easier to read i haven't read this version that much but we'll give it a shot tonight first second and third john out of the nlt the one who existed from the beginning is the one we have heard and seen we saw him with our own eyes and touched him with our own hands he is jesus christ the word of life this one who is life from God was shown to us, and we have seen him, and now we testify and announce to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was with the Father, and then he was shown to us. We are telling you about what we ourselves have actually seen and heard, so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy will be complete. This is the message he has given us to announce to you. God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not living in the truth. But if we are living in the light of God's presence, just as Christ is, then we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Christ of the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from every sin. If we say we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and refusing to accept the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from every wrong. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. Chapter 2 my dear children, I am writing this to you so that you will not sin. But if you do sin, there is someone to plead for you before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who pleases God completely. He is the sacrifice for our sins. He takes away not only our sins, but the sins of all the world. And how can we be sure that we belong to him? By obeying his commandments. If someone says, I belong to God, but doesn't obey God's commandments, that person is a liar and does not live in the truth. But those who obey God's word really do love him. That is the way to know whether or not we live in him. Those who say they live in God should live their lives in, as Christ did. Dear friends, I am not writing a new commandment, for it is an old one you have always had. Right from the beginning, this commandment, to love one another is the same message you heard before, yet it is also new. This commandment is true in Christ and is true among you, because the darkness is disappearing and the true light is already shining. If anyone says, I am living in the light, but hates a Christian brother or sister, that person is still living in darkness. Anyone who loves other Christians is living in the light and does not cause anyone to stumble. Anyone who hates a Christian brother or sister is living and walking in darkness. Such a person is lost, having been blinded by the darkness. I am writing to you, my dear children, because your sins have been forgiven because of Jesus. I am writing to you who are mature because you know Christ, the one who is from the beginning. I am writing to you who are young because you have won your battle with Satan. I have written to you, children, because you have known the Father. I have written to you who are mature because you know Christ, the one who is from the beginning. I have written to you who are young because you are strong with God's word living in your hearts. And you have won your battle with Satan. Stop loving the evil world and all that it offers you. For when you love the world, you show that you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only the lust for physical pleasure, the lust for everything we see, and pride in our possessions. There are not 
These are not from the Father. They are from the evil world, this evil world. And this world is fading away along with everything it craves. But if you do the will of God, you will live forever. Dear children, the last hour is here. You have heard that the Antichrist is coming, and already many such Antichrists have appeared. From this, we know that the end of the world has come. These people left our churches because they never really belonged with us. Otherwise, they would have stayed with us. But they left us, or when they left us, it proved that they do not belong with us. But you are not like that. For the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and all of you know the truth. So I am writing to you, not because you don't know the truth, but because you know the difference between truth and falsehood. And who is the great liar? The one who says that Jesus is not the Christ. Such people are antichrists, for they have denied the Father and the Son. Anyone who denies the Son doesn't have the Father either. But anyone who confesses the Son has the Father also. So you must remain faithful to what you have been taught from the beginning. If you do, you will continue to live in fellowship with the Son and with the Father. And in this fellowship, we enjoy the eternal life he promised us. I have written these things to you because you need to be aware of those who want to lead you astray. But you have received the Holy Spirit. And he lives within you, so you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. For the Spirit teaches you all things. And what he teaches is true. It is not a lie. So continue in what he has taught you and continue to live in Christ. And now, dear children, continue to live in fellowship with Christ so that when he returns, you will be full of courage and not shrink back from him in shame. Since we know that God is always right, we also know that all who do what is right are his children. 1 John chapter 3. See how very much our Heavenly Father loves us, for he allows us to be called his children, and we really are. But the people who belong to this world don't know God, so they don't understand that we are his children. Yes, dear friends, we are already God's children, and we can't even imagine what we will be like when Christ returns. But we do know that when he comes, we will be like him, for we will see him as he really is. And all who believe this will keep themselves pure, just as Christ is pure. Those who sin are opposed to the law of God. For all sin opposes the law of God, and you know that Jesus came to take away our sins. For there is no sin in him. So if we continue to live in him, we won't sin either. But those who keep on sinning have never known him or understood who he is. Dear children, don't let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it is because they are righteous, even as Christ is righteous. But when people keep on sinning, it shows they belong to the devil, who has been sinning since the beginning. But the Son of God came to destroy the works, these works of the devil. Those who have been born into God's family do not sin, because God's life is in them. So they can't keep on sinning, because they have been born of God. So now we can tell who are children of God and who are children of the devil. Anyone who does not obey God's commands and does not love other Christians does not belong to God. This is the message we have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. We must not be like Cain who belonged to, to the evil one and killed his brother. And why did he kill him? Because Cain had been doing what was evil and his brother had been doing what was right. So don't be surprised, dear brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. If we love our Christian brothers and sisters, it proves that we have passed from death to eternal life. But a person who has no love is still dead. Anyone who hates another Christian is really a murderer at heart. And you know that murderers don't have eternal life within them. We know what real love is because Christ gave up his life for us. And so we also ought to give up our lives for our Christian brothers and sisters. But if anyone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need and refuses to help, how can God's love be in that person? Dear children, let us 
stop just saying we love each other. Let us really show it by our actions. It is by our actions that we know we are living in the truth. So we will be confident when we stand before the Lord, even if our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Dear friends, our conscience is clear. We can come to God with bold confidence, and we will receive whatever we request because we obey him and do the things that please him. And this is his commandment. We must believe in the name of, the, of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who obey God's commandments live in fellowship with him, and he with them. And we know he lives in us because the Holy Spirit lives in us. 1 John chapter 4. Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the Spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. This is the way to find out if they have the Spirit of God. If a prophet acknowledges that Jesus Christ became a human being, that person has the Spirit of God. If a prophet does not acknowledge Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the Spirit of the Antichrist. You have heard that he is going to come into the world, and he is already here. But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won your fight with these false prophets, because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. These people belong to the world, so they speak from the world's viewpoint, and the world listens to them. But we belong to God. That is why those who know God listen to us. If they do not belong to God, they do not listen to us. That is how we know if someone has the spirit of truth or the spirit of deception. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is born of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. It is not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us, and his love has been brought to full expression through us. And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes, now testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. All who proclaim that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. We know how much God loved us, loves us, and we have put our trust in him. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence because we are like Christ here in this world. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for, it is for fear of judgment. And this shows that his love has not been perfected in us. We love each other as a result of his loving us first. If someone says, I love God, but hates a Christian brother or sister, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God whom we have not seen? And God himself has commanded that we must love not only him, but our Christian brothers and sisters too. 1 John chapter 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is a child of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. We know that we love God's children if we love God and obey his commandments. Loving God means keeping his commandments, and really, that isn't difficult. For every child of God defeats the evil world by trusting Christ to give the victory. And the ones who win this battle against the world are the ones who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And Jesus Christ was revealed as God's Son by his baptism in water and by shedding his blood on the cross, not by water only, but by water and blood. And the Spirit also gives us 
the testimony that this is true. So we have these three witnesses, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and all three agree. Since we believe human testimony, surely we can believe the testimony that comes from God, and God has testified about his Son. All who believe in the Son of God know that this is true. Those who don't believe this are actually calling God a liar because they don't believe what God has testified about his Son. And this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. So whoever has God's Son has life. Whoever does not have his Son does not have life. I write you this, I write this to you, who believe in the Son of God, so that you may know you have eternal life, and we can be confident that he will listen to us whenever we ask, him for anything in line with his will and if we know he is listening when we make our requests we can be sure that he will give us what we ask for if you see a Christian brother or sister sinning in a way that does not lead to death you should pray and God will give that person life but there is a sin that leads to death and I'm not saying you should pray for those who commit it every wrong is sin but not all sin leads to death. We know that those who have become part of God's family do not make a practice of sinning, for God's Son holds them securely, and the evil one cannot get his hands on them. We know that we are children of God, and that the world around us is under the power and control of the evil one, and we know that the Son of God has come, and he has given us understanding so that we can know the true God, and now we are in God because we are in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the only true God, and he is eternal life. Dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your heart. And that's the end of 1 John. Let's move on to 2 John. There's only one chapter in 2 John. This letter is from John the Elder. It is written to the chosen lady and to her children, whom I love in the truth, as does everyone else who knows God's truth. The truth that lives in us will be in our hearts forever. May grace, mercy, and peace, which come from God our Father and from Jesus Christ his Son, be with us who live in truth and love. How happy I was to meet some of your children and find them living in the truth, just as we have been commanded by the Father. And now I want to urge you, dear lady, that we should love one another. This is not a new commandment, but one we had from the beginning. Love means doing what God has commanded us, and he has commanded us to love one another. Just as you heard from the beginning, many deceivers have gone out into the world. They do not believe that Jesus Christ came to earth in a real body. Such a person is a deceiver and an antichrist. Watch out so that you do not lose the prize for which we have been working so hard. Be diligent, so that you will receive your full reward. For if you wander beyond the teaching of Christ, you will not have fellowship with God. But if you continue in the teaching of Christ, you will have fellowship with both the Father and the Son. If someone comes to you meet, into, to your meeting and does not teach the truth about Christ, don't invite him in into your house or encourage him in any way. Anyone who encourages him becomes a partaker or becomes a partner in his evil work. Well, I have much more to say to you, but I don't want to say it in a letter. For I hope to visit you soon and to talk with you face to face. Then our joy will be complete. Greetings from the children of your sister, chosen by God. That's the end of Second John. Let's keep going to Third John, just one chapter again. This letter is from John the Elder. It is written to Gaius, my dear friend, whom I love in the truth. My friend, I am praying that all is well with you and that your body is as healthy as I know your soul is. Some of the brothers recently returned and made me very happy by telling me about your faithfulness and that you are living in the truth. I could have no greater joy than to hear that my children live in the truth. Dear friend, you are doing a good work for God when you take care of the traveling teachers. 
who are passing through, even though they are strangers to you, they have told the church here of your friendship and your loving deeds. You do well to send them on their way in a manner that pleases God, for they are traveling for the Lord and accept nothing from those who are not Christians. So we ourselves should support them so that we may become partners with them for the truth. I sent a brief letter to the church about this, but Diotrephes, who loves to be the leader, does not acknowledge our authority. When I come, I will report some of the things he is doing and the wicked things he is saying about us. He not only refuses to welcome the traveling teachers, he also tells others not to help them. And when they do help, he puts them out of the church. Dear friends, don't let this bad example influence you. Follow only what is good. Remember that those who do good prove that they are God's children. And those who do evil prove that they do not know God. But everyone speaks highly of Demetrius. Even truth itself, we ourselves can say the same for him. And you know we speak the truth. I have much to tell you, but I don't want to do it in a letter, for I hope to see you soon, and then we will talk face to face. May God's peace be with you. Your friends here send you their greetings. Please give my personal greetings to each of our friends there. And that's the end of Third John. Hey, praise God for the reading of his word. If the Lord wills it, we'll see you guys on Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Sunday school, 11 a.m. corporate worship service, 6 p.m. evening worship. And if anybody's not busy at noon tomorrow, um, Saturday, we'll be meeting at Randall's. We're going to be starting a book called An Ark for All God's Noahs in a Gloomy, Stormy Day, written by Puritan Thomas Brooks in the 1600s. Um, you're welcome to join us. We have maybe a couple extra copies of it. Um, but if the Lord wills it, we'll see you Sunday. Have a great weekend. Goodbye.